talk about VMware Virtual SAN. So when we say Virtual SAN, what we want to talk about is first we'll talk about software-defined storage. We'll go through an overview of Virtual SAN, and then we'll talk about the use cases for Virtual SAN. So what do we mean by software-defined anything? So software-defined storage, software-defined networking, software-defined data center. What we're talking about is that the application that runs in your virtual machine should be the paramount purpose or paramount design. And so we should design them around the virtual machine. So with regard to software-defined storage, let's take a look back throughout history and some of our storage innovations over the years. So with vSphere or Virtual Infrastructure 3, we introduced NAS and iSCSI support. Four, we added thin provisioning at the virtual machine le level, as well as integration with the storage arrays with VAAI. With five, we had a, a, a lot of additions in terms of automation, automating placement of virtual machines with storage DRS, the vSphere APIs for storage awareness, whereby the storage array can tell us what the array is capable of. And that ties into our profile-driven storage, which leads us to software-defined storage. So we're going to take storage profiles and define the virtual machine based on the performance characteristics, the redundancy characteristics that we want. So with virtual sound, we're going to take the operational model that we had for compute, and we're going to bring that to storage. Rather than traditional LUN models, we're going to have for SAN and NAS a feature called VVOLs, which we announced at VMworld last year, and we'll talk about more at VMworld this year. Object-based storage in, in the cloud, and then also our hypervisor converged storage, which is what virtual SAN is today. We're the x86 servers, we aggregate the, the SSDs and spinning media and turn that into a data plane. With that, we'll get we'll continue to have data protection. We'll have mobility with vMotion and storage vMotion, and then we'll have performance and uh, SLA agreements based on what we are trying to accomplish with the virtual machine. But we want it all to be driven by policies. So we want the policy to be based around the application and the virtual machine that hosts that application. The application is king inside the data center. That's why we do IT, is so that we have the application. So rather than designing around the rest of the infrastructure, let's design around the virtual machine and have policy drive that. So virtual SAN is our, our hypervisor converged storage pool. We take the solid state drives, the flash drives, either PCIe or SAS or SATA attached SSDs and hard drives and turn that into a hybrid storage array called the vSAN data store. We use a resiliency through what we call our distributed RAID. We actually don't RAID the physical disks at all. We RAID the virtual machines. So we have virtual machine policies that determine how many copies of the data we have, what type of performance we have for stripes, for a RAID 1, RAID 0, uh, RAID 10 set, basically, set at each individual virtual machine. So we may have three or four different RAID policies on the same physical disks, and we drive that based out of the virtual machine. It's fully integrated within vSphere. On the other side, we actually have a demo that we can show you how to configure virtu uh, virtual SAN using vSphere and vCenter. So we also integrate fully with the rest of the VMware stack. So Horizon View Suite can manage it for virtual desktops. We can take advantage of snapshots, our backup products we'll called vSphere Data Protection. We can use vSphere Replication and Site Recovery Manager to facilitate automatic recovery from a disaster. It ties into our automation and uh, operations tools of vCenter Operations Manager and vCAC. And it can be used with vMotion, storage vMotion, storage DRS, regular DRS, vSphere high availability. So we can get shared storage capability in a hypervisor. We are not a VSA. There's no virtual machines that have to sit on top of it. We're actually embedded into vSphere. So with vSphere 5.5 update 1, it's actually already in containing all the bits that are necessary. All you have to do is just enable the role. And by going through the kernel as opposed to a management node, we bypass a lot of the performance impacts that would be here. We provide the shortest path to the I.O. And we don't consume resources unnecessarily. We don't have to dedicate CPU and memory to these virtual machines because we're already built into the hypervisor. So it's radically simple. We can scale from three nodes all the way out to 32. 
We, we use a mix of SSD and, and hard drives to create a hybrid style array. We can dynamically scale capacity. It's an object-based storage, so we actually take the virtual machines and break those into objects and track the metadata across them. We set the replication policies uh, as defined as failures to tolerate. And so we can have one copy of the data, two, three, or four copies of the data distributed across the cluster, providing a significant level of redundancy. And we do that at the virtual machine level rather than at the physical hardware level. So what that provides is it literally installs in two clicks, three if you click the OK button. Um, it's managed from the vSphere client and vCenter. It's all policy based. And we'll come, it's flash accelerated, so we get significant amounts of I.O. and scale about on that. And it's designed to grow as you go. So if you add an additional server, not only are you adding additional compute and memory resources, but you're also adding additional storage. And it's a flexible choice of industry standard har hardware. So there are two ways that we can design vSAN nodes. Uh, we have any server that's on the x86 or on the uh, hardware compatibility list for vSphere 5.5 update one, and using a controller and, and drives that are on the vSAN HCL are supported. But then also some of our partners, such as Cisco, have created vSAN ready nodes that are pre-validated by Cisco and VMware to be vSAN uh, vSAN configured. And so that would be the C620 uh, and the C. 640 uh, uh, rack mount servers are, are designed for vSAN already. And it doesn't require any specialized skills. It literally just ties into vCenter uh, and also the view administrator to enable these and, and design the roles. So rather than what we do, we take, we take the policies at the virtual machine. We decide availability, so this is the redundancy policies. We design the, the stripes for performance, and then we decide what type of capacity that we need, if we need to thin provision that. And then we can apply the policies to each individual virtual machine or type of virtual machine, and then vCenter and vSAN will make the placement for us, not only on the vSAN data store, but also on a, an external array if you're using that as well. And so this differs from the traditional, where we take this perspective of what are we going to do from storage, what do we what do we buy for the storage array, and then design up the stack to the virtual machine. Instead, we want to define the storage policy at the virtual machine level and let the resources automate themselves, basically. And it's very easy to change. You can very easily change the redundancy policy and the performance policy and the placement policy of a virtual machine on the fly without having to go back and re re map a worldwide name and reconfigure the storage array. We just change the policy here, and the rest of it propagates those changes down through the data store. Oh, yeah, scalability. So we can start, like I said, with three nodes. We can add a fourth pretty easily. We can add some four more. And you know, up to 12, 16. And we put that in a vSAN data store. But we can really actually scale all the way out to 32 nodes. And with 32 nodes, we can get 4.4 petabytes of, da of data into the vSAN data store with 2 million IOPS. So significant scale capabilities from this. Each of these nodes with it, uh, can hold up to 35 physical disks with five SSDs on, on top of that, providing this sort of scale is something that we can enable simply by a click in vCenter. So, 32 hosts, 4.4 petabytes, 2 million IOPS on a vSAN cluster. So the use cases, we talked about a little bit about some of the integrations that we have. So we can, are using these for backup and DR targets, tier two, test dev. But the biggest one is going to be uh, virtual desktops. Because we recommend VDI clusters to be on their own compute, separate from the server workloads. The virtual stand has a very nice place for that because also the other difference is the I.O. peaks in the morning when people log on, the peaks again and when people log off for the day. And so we want the storage to be as close to the compute as possible. And when using link clones and other features of that, we can, in Horizon View, set our virtual machine policies at a virtual desktop pool level and have a policy apply to a pool. And then all the virtual machines that are tied to that pool have that policy. So if I need two copies of it, great. If I only need one copy because I'm redirecting the persona elsewhere, I, I have a lot of flexibility. This by far is going to be the biggest use case for that. But also remote offices, branch offices, 
DR sites, and then also building the management clusters on a three-node environment where you have your automation center, vCenter operations tools, uh, and then have the compute be running on, on some other storage and some other designs. So the major goals of software-defined storage or software-defined everything in the software-defined data center is to manage it from the basis of the application that's running in the virtual machine that you're concerned with. And so from there, it allows us to set this policy-based automation across all types of storage. So if you're using virtual SAM or you're using a traditional storage array, we can define the policy that will follow the virtual machine wherever we want it to go. And we can change the policy so that if we want to move something from a virtual SAN to an EMC array or a NetApp array or some, some other array, we just simply change the policy and vCenter automates it from there. So the application is king in the software-defined data center, and so we want to manage everything from that application. So, so. Any other questions? Any questions?